Hello, hello! Welcome to Club Chrisette. I'm your host, Chrisette, and welcome back to A Light in the Dark. So when we last left off, we had just been kidnapped, and we spent our first day with our kidnapper, just trying to probe her and kind of understand why she kidnapped us, but she didn't really give us any information, just, you know, pretty much disdain for us, like hated our guts like with no real reasoning although it sounded like it was like socioeconomic reasons but cause she would refer to him as rich boy and remind him how hey like not all families are like yours even though you had a pretty bad one too so without further ado let's hop into a light in the dark day two silence girl let's see Morning. Note updated. So cold. I didn't feel better after I slept. Instead, I even felt more tired. I was hoping to find a chance to escape when she fell asleep. However, time passed and she didn't show any sign of closing her eyes. I couldn't help but fall asleep first. The last thing I saw was her lighting another cigarette. My body must have really been exhausted if I could fall asleep like that. I opened my eyes in a daze and saw an unfamiliar face right before me. Hey, it's the other girl from the main screen! Ah! Uh, who's she, though? I jumped back reflexively and tried to shield my chest with my hands. Yet, my tight-up hands reminded me of my kidnapped status. Regardless, I was shocked by this new face. I stared at the new girl before me. The first thing I noticed were her beautiful eyes. Clean, light brown, like pieces of amber. Her thick coat and dark red sweater looked pretty old. Her small body suggested she might have been in junior high, so she was clearly unfit for a place like this. Oh no, she has a knife too. I didn't know who she was, but I easily noticed the knife in her hand. Yeah, me too. I noticed it too, bro. She stared straight at me, but showed no signs of speaking, which somehow emitted an inexplicable pressure. Who are you? I tried to ask her, but she refused to answer and shook her head. She was on guard of my every movement with pressed lips. There was no sign of the kidnapper around. There were only the two of us in this room. In other words, a good chance to escape. But we're not going to risk that yet. Can you untie the rope for me? head shaking. Seeing she had no intention to help, I tried to untie it myself. Her expression vividly changed upon noticing my attempt. D don't don't move! As expected, only another victim or the accomplice would be here. If she wasn't tied up, but instead she held a knife, then she must be my guard quiet girl in the antisocial one. What a bizarre combo. This sort of plot in a movie would easily trigger the haters. It appeared reality would be more ridiculous than fiction. I breathed out and couldn't help but laugh out of stress. I had no idea why they would pick her as a partner. I could defeat someone of her size, even if she held the knife. Assuming she was alone, is there anyone else here? There would be no progress if I didn't strike up a conversation. I decided to speak proactively after giving it some thought. Triple dot- no, that's five dots. She stared at me tightly with no response, making one wonder if she understood. 
You were asked to guard me, right? Still no response. Can you untie the rope for me? I can I can't feel them now, and if it stays like this She shook her head, finally speaking after being silent for a while. Big sis told me not to listen to you. Oh, okay. I mean I figured they were gonna be related somehow. They look similar, but sisters make sense. Her voice was light and quiet, like smoke in the air. I finally heard her speak, yet it was frustrating to hear something so pointless. Who is this big sis? Who is this big sis? Is she the one with the long hair that kidnapped me? <sighs> no response. Where is she? I need to talk to her. She looks so suspicious, like, why would you need to talk to my sister? And it's like, well, I need to use the bathroom again. After continuously asking her questions, I had gotten not a single answer. Perhaps I was asking them too eagerly, and that made her cautious. She looked at me suspiciously, but refused to say anything. I told myself to hang in there. I had to stay calm in these situations. I took a deep breath to suppress my unease. I tried to smile to lighten up the mood. Do you have anything to eat? Don't tell me your sister doesn't allow that either. I had no strength with an empty stomach. I hadn't eaten anything since yesterday and my stamina went out faster in this cold weather. I had to save my energy for my chance. This was a war of tuition. Either she let me go or I'd give up first. Answering with actions, she put a bowl on the ground, grabbed the water bottle with difficulty, and carefully poured some into it. Here. She handed me the bowl, and then brought me a pack of crackers. Worrying I might escape, she never moved her gaze away from me. The hand grasping the knife never loosened up. Oh man, she's gonna get, like, some, like, cramping if she keeps doing that. Observing her actions quietly, I hoped to read her thoughts, but couldn't discern anything except stress. Triple dot. I drank the water with so much effort, spilling quite a lot on my clothes due to my tied up hands. My clothes were wet again after finally getting dried. The hard crackers tasted like pure flour alone, hard to swallow even with water. I knew it was not the time to be picky. I had to cherish any opportunity to replenish my strength. Triple dot. Noticing her conflicting gaze, I asked, What's wrong? Big Sis is not a bad person. She will let you go when she gets the money. So please don't move. I will cooperate, at least for now. I mean, both of those answers kind of seemed the same, you know. I didn't finish the full sentence, but she already looked happy and clearly dropped her guard a little. Organizing the information I could gather, I started to plan my next steps. Would the teacher notice something was wrong if I hadn't gone to cram school for two days? Unlikely, considering how often I skipped it. Unless it lasted long enough, but even the worst case scenario, they would only contact my parents instead of the police. Right. I mean, that might bring realization to the parents that he is actually missing, though. Like, they already gotten the call that he was kidnapped anyway. I started to regret not having more friends who would notice me going missing. Expecting her to let me go upon the ransom... Would it really be that easy? Remembering that vague smile, I didn't feel very assured. The girl was squatting next to the wall and stared at me while hugging her legs. There was no curiosity in her eyes, as though nothing interested her here. She was just guarding this place at someone else's behest. Big sis, huh? Considering the relationship, 
It was unlikely she planned the kidnapping. She was most likely an accomplice following orders. Unlike some stereotypical bad girls who smoked and dyed their hair, she looked like a well-behaved but shy kid, at least if I hadn't met her in this situation. So, who was planning all this? Somehow, I felt things weren't as simple as they seemed. There were too many points of suspicion if there were ones planning this. Even carrying me here should have been problematic for them. Also, the person she was contacting concerned me as well. Hey. I called out to catch her attention and tried to start up a conversation. She was younger than the kidnapper yesterday, and with much less animosity, there might have been a chance to convince her. How did you get my information? She's not going to tell us. I don't know if she even knows. You're a student, right? What are you doing here? She stared at me with no change of expression. I wasn't sure if she heard me. This might have been even more troublesome than the other one. I could at least guess my kidnapper's thoughts if there was any sort of conversation. I was only wasting my time here at this rate. I don't know what she told you, but this is kidnapping. I tried to sound more threatening to make her talk. There could be punishment, even if you are underage, and that would involve your family, too. Do you know that? They're just using you. They might blame all this on you later. Pixis would not do that. She abruptly interrupted me. How can you be so sure? Just because she was kind to you. Do you think she would still be on your side by then? Finally making her talk, I tried to push forward. Has she told you her plan after getting the money? Do you really know? Big Sis would not do such a thing. You're the only one here who doesn't know her. She interrupted me loudly and stood up all of a sudden with her little body shaking. I didn't expect such a big reaction. Perhaps her relationship with her Big Sis was closer than I thought. Of course, I don't know your big sis. I stopped for a few seconds and stared at her coldly. All I know is that she is a kidnapper. That's all that matters. Liar! You don't know why big sis! She raised the knife and yelled at me with her chest heaving up and down, but swallowed the word before the key part. Why then? Big sis is just... Facing my question, she lowered her gaze. Worrying she might get too agitated and really harm me, I decided to change the subject despite my desire to continue. Anyway, I don't get it, but you better give it some thought. I coldly ended the conversation, leaving her staring at me hesitantly. No matter how much faith one has in others, no one would stay still after hearing these words. I wasn't sure how effective that was. I could only wait and see. It's not like that. Not able to retort, she squatted next to the wall in depression, mumbling with her head in her arms. Seeing her almost about to cry made me feel a little uncomfortable, but I would do anything as long as I could get out of here. Besides, they were the ones at fault here. There should be no sense of guilt involved, even if I hurt them a little. Let's try to strike up a conversation with her. Remaining actions, three. Let's chat, young girl. Um, who are you? Why me? So cold. How long have you known your big sis? Hmm. You only have three. She won't answer who are you, so let's ask her about her big sis. How long have you known your big sis? She's not going to answer that either. I thought that would be a good question. We could get her age then. She stared at me cautiously. She stared at me cautiously, as though not feeling too happy about me saying bad things about her big sis. Uh, you really like your sister, huh? 
I sighed heavily. The depression in my chest didn't lessen one bit. Yeah? She nodded without a second thought. She was only this certain when it involved her big sis. I mean, no answer here is good. We'll take a gamble, though. What if you're being manipulated? I don't want to hear that. She awkwardly turned her head to hide it behind the book. And refu Oh, she's reading a book? She awkwardly turned her head to hide it behind the book and refused to talk to me further. Well, we messed that one up pretty badly. Let's try to... Con Let's try to strike up a conversation with her. Remaining actions. Oh shoot, I did not mean to hit observe. Okay. Well, we're observing for now. The yellowing paper reveals a sign of age. It seems to be some popular video game from the past. What? Like, I thought that was a backpack we just checked. Do you see it? Like, it looks like a backpack. There is nothing usable as a weapon except for a pen, which is a poor choice against a knife. I didn't expect to find anything interesting. I should check somewhere else. Oh my gosh, okay. Books? There's a quite a variety of books, ranging from magazines, reference books, to even cookbooks. The only thing they shared in common is their poor condition. A theory of justice, the Lucifer effect, quite a few things I've never heard of. They might be some used books picked up from somewhere. You really like reading, don't you? Yes. She has been reading at that corner for a few days now. What? Like, how much time has passed? Like, I thought we were just in here. It's day two, right? Like, she had been reading at that corner for a few days now. She had changed to another book. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Oh, my God. Calm down. She had been reading at the corner for a few days now. She had changed to another book after finishing one, and she never got bored throughout the afternoon. I would lose my patience if I had to read f for more than one hour or two. The book selection was pretty diverse, ranging from novel to magazines to travel guides. It didn't appear there was any real selective progress. Where did you get all these books? You borrowed them? It was unlikely for them to buy books if they had to kidnap me for money. However, there was no library barcode on them either, on top, on top of the fact that they looked quite old. Big Sis gave them to me. She really wants to look out for her little sister then. Okay. She answered without raising her head and kept flipping through the magazine. Big Sis wants me to read more so people won't look down on me in the future. Okay, that's starting to make sense of the kidnapper then. Right. That explanation was unexpected. I thought she would say educated people were all liars and rich people were all demons. All the talk about how damnable the rich people are, yet she still wanted to be like them. We're out of action, so I feel like we're missing some important pieces of dialogue here. I apologize. So, does your sis go to school? Only till middle school. She raised her head with a rare smile on her face. She might not look like it, but big sis had good grades. For real? Good grades? I tried to imagine the girl in a school uniform, and I just couldn't picture her as someone with good grades. Imprisoned life was surprisingly boring. I couldn't do anything with tied hands, and the only person I could talk to was as silent as a rock in the corner of the room. There was no phone, no TV, no internet. The usually insufficient 24 hours felt way too long. Yet she didn't look one bit bored. 
flipping through a book from God knows where, she observed my movements from time to time. I ate the same crackers for breakfast and lunch. I also went to the bathroom once, hoping to find a chance to escape. She stood outside with the knife when I was in there, neither rushing me nor leaving. Having found nothing useful there, I left post haste. Don't you eat anything more normal, or do you just love crackers? She ate the same thing as me. They were cheap and tasteless no matter how long you chewed, and they only served to make your mouth dry. Unless you won a year's worth of them from a lottery, there is really no reason to keep eating them. I started the conversation out of boredom. She raised her head thoughtfully. This is very cheap and lasts long. Aren't you worried about malnutrition? Oh, that's a good point. There was nothing but starch, let alone fiber or vitamins. Pretty ironic for something called a nutrition biscuit. <laughs> oh? Showing no concern about balancing her diet, she didn't even raise her head. It just replied nonchalantly. <laughs> Hanging out with her this whole morning, she didn't give any sort of proper response except when it was about her big sis. Pretty incredible, I would say. Strangely enough, it wasn't like she cared about this big sis that much. Really? It was more like she just didn't care about anything else. Did you figure something out with my dad? No idea. Her answer without her answer without hesitation didn't appear to be a lie. However, it did trigger my curiosity if she didn't even care about the status of the ransom. No matter who you are, you must care about something, whether it be family, work, or, or some dream. Yet she had none of that. There wasn't even some sort of animosity against me, only caution at most. Uh, focus on resting for now. Rather than fulfilling pointless curiosity, I should rest and replenish my strength. Okay, cool, our stamina did go up. Noon. Oh man, we just slept all afternoon? Within the silence, the sudden phone vibration sounded extra sharp. Unlike yesterday, the girl picked up the phone immediately. Hello? Perhaps she was asked about me as the girl glanced at me when answering the call. Yes, it's all right. I had no idea what the conversation entailed and could only guess from her words. Okay, okay. It was the kidnapper from yesterday. Where could she be if she needed to call to confirm my situation? Did she already contact someone to get the ransom? Or maybe they had some other bases? He's next to me, alright? The girl handed me the phone. I tried to raise my hands and then shrugged helplessly. She hesitated a little then put the phone next to my ear. At this distance, maybe I could bump into her by surprise. I could probably still overwhelm her, even with my tied-up limbs. Before making up my mind, I heard a voice from the phone. Hello? The cold voice sounded a little different through the phone. The noisy background seemed to indicate she was somewhere outside, maybe a restaurant or a karaoke palace. Hey, can you hear me? Yep, yep. I see you're still kicking. Sorry to disappoint. She didn't seem pleased with my greeting. Maybe she was expecting me to go into a panic or shiver in a corner. The more she wanted to see me in fear, the more I wanted to act indifferently. It wasn't really part of any sort of strategy. just seemed pointless to show resistance. You should know this by now, but I'll repeat it again. Don't try to run. Don't ask questions. I am watching you, and if anything happens she paused and then left a threat even if i agree to return you i wouldn't be breaking the deal if you lost an arm or a leg got it i got it i didn't even need to guess what she wanted to say lose an arm or a leg throw me off a cliff blah 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 
Hell, even agreeing to return me alive was already saintly of her. Most wouldn't even intend to keep the hostage alive. Hostages usually got silent after the kidnappers got the money and were ready to run. I didn't plan to believe her words from the beginning. If I played too nice, I might get killed without knowing how. Is my dad paying? None of your business. Just worry about yourself. I mean, it kind of is his business. He's the one in the situation. But... Bullshit. Why would I ask about that, if not out of concern for my own safety? Exactly! I wanted to ask more, but got stopped mercilessly. I am heading back now, so stay put. That's all. Hey, wait. Before I could say anything, she hung up. Hanging up right after she said whatever she wanted. What a woman. Hearing the empty sounds of a disconnected call, I knew being mad would make no difference. What did Big Sis say? She approached me once the call ended and asked me worriedly. Within the short period of time, I wondered what to say. Answer honestly. We're not going to try to manipulate the young girl. I mean, I know we were trying to at first. That was our character's intention. But I wouldn't know how turning them against each other would work. I feel like they would just get me dead, you know. She told me to stay put and she would be home soon. Oh. Not showing any emotion, she simply took away the phone and sat back in the corner. I remembered how the big sis sat next to the window smoking, seemingly in thought and also impatient. In contrast, this girl was way too quiet. She just sat there holding her legs together. How much did she really know about the kidnapping? She didn't even know me or nor what to do. Her big sis asked to guard me, so she guarded. Her big sis asked her not to talk to me, so she didn't talk to me. Whether it was about the outcome or the reward, she was clueless and didn't care. She just had faith in her big sis. Hmm. Such blinded trust was not far from stupidity. I almost felt bad for her. Time felt much longer when you were waiting. I even sighed in relief when I heard a sound of approach. A motorcycle engine was shut down not too far away, and the closing footsteps echoed through the staircase. The noise was empty, but had a certain rhythm. There was no elevator. Was this an apartment or some sort of privately owned house? I could only hear one person's steps, so there was no one coming back with her. I'm back. The one who walked in was the same girl from the day before, a.k.a. the big sis. Same overcoat as yesterday and her expression hadn't changed either. That's something else they share in common. <laughs> Welcome home. She's just like, why are you talking to me? Unsure of what was going on in my mind, she looked at me suspiciously and handed the plastic bat in her hand to the other girl. Pinto, eat it while it's still hot. Big sis! The little girl whispered something into her ear. I couldn't tell from the con I couldn't tell the context from the distance. The girl nodded, staring dead straight at me. Once the girl finished, she moved toward me with the knife. She tried to check the rope, even pulling it a few times to make sure it was tight enough. I told you, I didn't do anything. If I could get out of this, do you think I'd really stay here? Quiet. Ask her, then. She threw the other girl a questioning glance, which was answered in a silent nod. Her head wasn't even turned. It seemed like the bento was much more attractive than the situation here. <sighs> she snorted unhappily, but couldn't find a reason to act up. She just then started to laugh scornfully. Whatever. I doubt you have the balls to try anything anyway. 
You have a rich mommy and daddy arranging everything for you from school to work. You probably even have a maid cleaning the house. You can't do shit on your own, can you? Here we go again. This ridiculous resentment was not just aimed at me, but anyone with a better life than her. What was the point of hating all these people? Would it change anything about her life? Would it be more practical if she tried to change something instead of hating? Where did you go? She probably would only be more pissed off if I continued, so I decided to change the subject to avoid trouble. Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Not cutting me any slack, she raised her eyebrow proactively. I sighed hopelessly. This was really going nowhere if she kept up with this attitude. You can start eating, don't mind me. After she spoke, I did notice a little girl hadn't removed her chopsticks despite having opening the bento, as though waiting for her big sis to start the meal together. I had dinner already. Don't need to leave me anything. She loosened up her furrowed brow and patted the little girl's head kindly. There was even a smile on her face. The little girl nodded obediently. Even as an outsider like me could tell how close they were. They look like exactly the same in the face. I'm serious. With the exception of like their... What's surrounding their face is a little different. But they look very related. You can tell. If anything, I couldn't believe she had an actual expression in her face. More questions popped into my mind upon seeing their interaction. With such familiarity, what was their relationship? Note updated. We gotta check these notes eventually. The sound of water flowing in the bathroom reminded me that I hadn't taken a shower in two days. It still felt uncomfortable, even though I'd barely moved or sweat. I was willing to give up half of my possessions for a hot shower and pay with my future income for a cup of cocoa as a bonus. The little girl was clearly starved and was quietly and happily eating the rice. She paid no attention to me. She looked extra weak and small from here. I still couldn't believe she was could be a kidnapper. <laughs> what kind of family would allow her to do such a thing? Whatever. Considering my own family, I had no right to criticize others. Phew! The girl left the bathroom holding her hair. She only washed her face since there was no hot water. The light shone on her face, rendering her pale complexion a little more rosy, yet the expression on her face was still cold as ice. What are you looking at? She seemingly noticed my gaze and asked me with the eyebrow raised. Nothing. Just, I hadn't taken a shower for a while. You think this is some fancy hotel, rich boy? I would have called customer service, given such quality. Keep flapping your mouth, I dare you. Never mind. She snorted with contempt then walked to the window lightly to shake the other girl's shoulder. The little girl had finished her bento and was falling asleep against the wall despite her best efforts to stay awake. Go to the bed to sleep. You'll catch cold like this. Hmm? She nodded sleepily and climbed into the bed obediently. Not minding all the dust on it, she grabbed the bed sheet and laid down. Maybe she was really tired. It didn't take long for her to fall asleep completely, leaving only the sound of steady breathing in the room. The girl walked to the window, opened her bento, and then started to eat it quickly. Nothing for me. Tormented by the scent of food, I couldn't help but ask. You can just eat the crackers. How about just a cup of coffee? I have money in my bag. <laughs> Rather than a hot dinner, I preferred some hot coffee to relax my nerves. You done yet? Ugh. I mean, what's kind of weird is he's offering her money, like, that he has money in her bag and the like, and yet... 
Because she wants money, you know. I know she's trying to hold up that... Um, professional cold criminal kind of status right now. I had learned that protesting wouldn't help. And now the headache was even more unbearable without coffee. She looked troubled and was just eating absentmindedly. She kept poking the drumstick for what seemed to be no reason. Please stop playing with the food, even if you're not in the mood. I can have it if you have no appetite. Hugger plus anger made me give the suggestion. I am thinking about how to keep your mouth shut. I doubt me... I doubt me doing that would solve your problem. Though noticing her darkened look, I decided to keep my mouth shut. Piecing all the hints together with her reaction, I could only come up with one conclusion. You couldn't reach my dad? How did... Are you trying to trick me? Realizing she slipped without thinking, her face instantly darkened again. I didn't mean anything. I just thought... Fearing she might lose her temper, I immediately tried to pass off the responsibility. However, she stood up suddenly. You looking down on me? Find me easy to fool, huh? She bit her lips, staring at me with utter hatred, voice colder than ever. Not at all. I'm just guessing randomly. There must be something wrong, and I doubt the police have found out this soon. Look, I... Her reaction far surpassed my expectations. I tried to explain myself, but that didn't stop her from rocking towards me. She walked closer and closer with the knife, eyes flashing with hysteria. Was she really going to do this? Now I was really fearing for my life for the first time ever. She looked like a cornered animal that would do anything in desperation. Don't struggle. Before she got the money, she wouldn't kill me. If resistance was futile, I decided to close my eyes and grit my teeth, hoping it wouldn't, hoping she wouldn't continue any further. I smelled the faint scent. I smelled the faint scent and felt her hair on my cheek, plus rapid breathing. What's that smell? Unbelievably, at this moment of life and death, I was thinking about something this insignificant. Against my skin was a cold sensation. The blade was right before my chest. A simple push would bury it deeper into my flesh. I opened my eyes and saw the look of pure ice right before me. Don't lie to me. The voice next to my ear was light but clear. I will say it one more time. Don't lie to me. If you look down on me, you will regret it. Her voice was calm, and the knife was steady. She didn't clarify how she would do it, nor did she ask for my confirmation, yet this threat was more powerful than anything prior. All of my words got stuck in my throat. My body was paralyzed to the point that I couldn't even blink. She meant it. I could read the emotion in her eyes. That was pure, murderous intent. No question about it. She would do it if I did it again. I am done with folks like you. Don't think I can't. Worst case scenario, I will just die with you. No biggie for someone like me. She finished her sentence, moved away with the knife, and walked back to the window. I just laid there on the ground motionlessly. My tense body was still trembling. At that moment, I confirmed something. They could end me at any time. The notion of her not touching me before getting the money or having some backup plan meant nothing to them. At this point, she had nothing to lose. <laughs> I took a deep breath as I faced the window. That's how I calmed myself down since childhood. What I needed to do stayed the same. The desk lamp drew a strong shadow from her. 
What had just occurred still creeped me out a little. However, since she had not contacted my family, there was still a chance. I breathed in deeply, gathered the courage, and talked to her. I have a proposal. She continued to look out the window motionlessly, showing no interest in my question. Let me go now, and all my money is yours. It might not be much, but still, 70 to 80,000 NTD, I don't know what currency that is, I apologize, in total, and I swear I will tell no one. Knowing she must be listening, I kept going on my own, even without a response. You can escort me to the ATM if you want, or do it in any manner you prefer. You want to keep this on the down low, right? Why so insistent? I used my last bit of strength to convince her. Considering her position, I tried to propose something that would be mutually beneficial. I believed no one would risk his or her life until there was no other choice. Now, is it still not too late? Think about it. The wait was so long, I thought there was no response, but she finally turned her head. There was no rage in her eyes, only exhaustion. Why should I believe you? Because she's saying, Why should I believe that you will hand me the money and never call the cops? I, I couldn't answer out of hesitation. It was hard to create a situation where both sides could trust each other in the first place. I wouldn't agree to such terms if the roles were reversed. I would be the one in control once I got my freedom. She wouldn't be able to do anything to stop me from calling the cops. No answer? Then shut the hell up and stop wasting my time. Rather than handing her fate to me, she'd rather believe in herself. All my gathered confidence grew fainter and fainter, and I was out of ideas temporarily. But if this kept going, then what can I do to win your trust? I asked with my last ounce of courage. Matching her stare, I could see the fragile fragility under her cold look. She grew silent and started to ponder my question, then a better smile appeared on her face. I don't know. She turned to the window and quietly said it again. I don't know. The mood is heavy. I must try to do something. Let's chat. Oh no! Do you really think you can get out of this unscathed? Realizing I couldn't convince her normally, I changed the plan and tried to threaten her. She just looked at me with indifference. It didn't faze her at all. There's still time. If you just let me go... Let you go? You think I'm a fool? Do you think I tied you up for fun? Who do you think you are? The series of questions rendered me speechless. Instead of fear, my words triggered her rage. I realized then how much determination it required for her to do it. Rather than acting on a wild impulse, she knew full well what she was doing and the consequences that followed, yet she decided to do it anyway. In comparison, I underestimated the situation. Just let you go? Do you want to... Just let you go? What do you know, anyway? Do you think you're some big shot? Why do you think I kidnapped you, hmm? We'll ask why, like we don't know. Why, then? You wouldn't get it anyway. Not expecting me to really ask that, she paused and then moved away her gaze. I won't get it if you don't explain. So many questions, just stay quiet till we get the money. You started it. If you have time for this, what about figuring out how to make your dad spit out the money? Not wanting to continue the conversation, she changed the subject after a grunt. I mean, he proposed in the last episode to talk to the dad that would convince him most likely that he was there. So, and they declined that, so.
Okay, we'll ask how much does the little girl know about the kidnapping. How much does she know about the kidnapping? I asked her about the little girl, hoping to learn more information. Huh? None of your business. She changed subject non-committically, but then after a while followed up with, She has nothing to do with this. I forced her to help. Oh, I was surprised by that answer. I thought she would push the responsibility on her, yet now it sounded like she was protecting her. What an interesting relationship. Don't you feel guilty? Using the kid like that, don't you feel guilty? One more word and I will make you unable to talk again. Hitting a nerve, she malevolently pulled out her knife. It felt more like rage than a threat. How pathetic. If you're going to talk big, then you better face it. The punch in the face was painfully hot. Seeing her twisted face out of anger, I looked at her and grunted. Going for violence just because you can't win the argument. How profound. Why, you. I didn't need to talk to enrage her. I just needed to keep looking at her. This naturally wouldn't help anything, but I couldn't swallow it down seeing how she manipulated a naive girl. The mood is heavy. I must try to do something. We'll rest. It was getting late, and I couldn't find a way to change the situation. Instead of escaping or waiting for the ransom, the safest option was to convince her to let me go. Things still, things could still get resolved without much incident. It wouldn't be this easy once the police got involved. But how? Even though I could tell she had hesitated, I couldn't win her trust. So I had to win her trust first. The sudden vibration broke the silence. She looked at the phone screen and then jolted a little as though being electrocuted. She lowered her eyes and read the message. She raised the corner of her mouth, but it didn't appear to be that happy. What is it? I had a bad feeling and instantly asked. There'll be a call in ten minutes. Tell your dad to pay up if you want to go home. The unexpected change of events instantly froze my blood. This was way too soon. I was naive to think I still had time to convince her. The moment she reached my family, there was no turning back. The police would start taking action. The family preparing the ransom and the culprit, and the culprit preparing the escape. Now what? What now? What now? I, click, I quickly went through all the possibilities in my mind, but couldn't come up with a solution. I must not stop thinking. There must be a way. Time passed, second by second, and I had no intention to hesitate. It's the money you want, right? Is there really no other way? Out of options, I gave it my all and just yelled at her. Not giving her a chance to contemplate, I continued after a quick pause. Let me go and you can have all the money as proof of my silence about this. Think about it. You really think you can get the money from this that easily? Are you okay with playing hide and seek for the rest of your life? If it... I couldn't finish my words. Seeing her expression, I realized that was it. Under the night light, she looked almost like a dream, too empty and transparent to be touched. That smile couldn't hide the helplessness and regret in her eyes. Silence and immense sadness. There is no turning back. Her voice was calm, surprisingly. There was no anger or accusation, only concession in that expression. Her, She surrendered to her hopeless life. Nothing was more convincing than that expression. So, even she could express such hopelessness. There has been no turning back since a long time ago. The phone vibrated again. Seeing her pick up the phone, I couldn't say anything. I should have known. The moment the phone rang, nay, from the very beginning, she had no other choice but this. 
Under the serene moonlight, the cogwheel started to spin faster. The girl opened the phone. The screen flashed the time. 3 a.m. There was only steady breathing in the room. The boy couldn't resist the desire to sleep after all. It's the money you want, right? Is there really no other way? Remembering his words, the determination in his eyes surpassed her expectations. Perhaps he wasn't as useless as she thought. <laughs> there was no regret in her decision, only a vague note of ironic sadness. Never until this moment had anyone cared about what she wanted. Oh, shoot. Never until this moment had anyone cared about what she wanted, trying to convince her to not break the law. No more should... No more. One should take responsibility for one's life, or don't keep asking someone to help you. There was no return. Either she would get the money and pay the debt, or get arrested instead. The girl raised her head and looked at the starry sky, standing next to the window like a statue. Stars sprinkled like her unsettled mind. Finally, she breathed out quickly. Worst case scenario, I would just die with him. The quiet voice of the girl evaporated in the room along with the cigarette smoke. Ooh, things are starting to pick up. It's good. It's good so far. I'm excited to see what happens. Maybe she will get arrested, or maybe our character will be able to convince her to let him go, and, you know, it'll just be silence. Who knows? I'm very curious to see what direction the story takes. But alrighty, everybody. I'd like to hear your comments down below. How do you think it's going to end so far? What direction or choices do you think are going to come up to help us have a different outcome? I'd like to hear your comments down below and I'll definitely reply to you. But until next time, you all have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!